Welcome, string players. This video is for students who play violin, viola, and cello and are in their second year of playing an instrument. If you started your instrument last year in third grade and now you're playing your string instrument in fourth grade, that means you're in year two in returning orchestra. If you started your instrument last year in fourth grade and now you're in fifth grade in your second year, this video is also for you. We have two halves of returning orchestra, those in their second year of playing and those in your, their third. From here on out, I will refer to our returning orchestra as year two returning orchestra and year three. This video is for year two returning orchestra. We're gonna review the topics we covered in our first music lesson. At our first music lesson, we reviewed how to follow our home practice checklist to make sure we're playing everything correctly at home. Our practice expectation for this year is to play at least four days every week. Five would be better, but we understand that we have busy lives. Every time you practice at home, you should log into our returning orchestra Google Classroom and open up our home practice checklist. Once you follow all the steps on that checklist, you're done practicing. It's that easy. The first step on our practice checklist is to open up your instrument. The second step on our practice checklist is to warm up. Our warm ups for these first few lessons are going to be bowing warm ups. Let's play through our warm up for this week, which is playing number 49 and number 50 on page 17. Go ahead and set up your instrument. Remember how to place your shoulder sponge? Your shoulder sponge has a thin side and a thick side. If you play violin or viola, you attach your shoulder sponge with the thin side by the chin rest. Think thin, chin. Once it's there, I can rest it gently on my lap and tuck the sponge underneath the rubber bands. Let's go through setting up our bow. Before you set up your bow, you need to tighten the bow. In order to tighten the bow, you turn the, turn, the tightening screw to the right. Think right tight. You can turn it five or six times. Some bows may need more, some bows may need less. You know you're done tightening the bow when the gap between the stick and the hair is just big enough for you to fit your pinky finger inside. If you can fit two of your fingers between that gap or three, then your bow is too tight and you could cause damage to your bow. To loosen your bow, go to the left and turn the tightening screw to the left. Think left, loose, right, tight. I know that my bow is tight enough because my pinky just fits between the stick and the hair. Let's review our bow grip. First, you flop your fingers over the top. Make sure your fingertips or fingernails are hanging over the edge. Not your whole hand, like this, just your fingertips. Make sure you spread out your fingertips and don't have them all squished together. We call that a mitten hand like your hand is fit inside a mitten, you wanna spread your fingers out like your hand would be in a glove. If you play violin or viola, you need to put your pinky on top of the bow stick for balance. If you play the cello, leave your pinky wrapped around the outside. The third step is to curve your thumb and place it on the bottom of the frog. You may place your thumb on the bottom of the frog or on the bottom of the bow stick. At this point, I will accept either thumb position, whichever one gives you the most balance. Then I'm ready to place my bow on the string. If you need to review some bowing or bow grip warmups, you can practice your bow hold and do some windshield wipers. If you can flip your bow over like this 
and maintain a good bow grip with your fingers spread apart and thumb curved underneath, then you are ready to start. Let's look at page 17, number 49, raise and lower. Go ahead and lift your instrument up to your shoulder and rest your chin on the chin rest. Make sure you're sitting up tall with your instrument going off to the left for violin and viola. You don't want to slouch and you don't want to have your instrument sticking straight out in front of you like a big spike coming out of your neck. We called those neck unicorns in orchestra last year. Don't be a neck unicorn. Have your instrument going off to the left. Then you can place your bow and rest it on the A string. Our first note of number 49 has a symbol that looks like a staple above it. That symbol is our symbol for down bow. To play a down bow, you place your bow at the frog, and when you play, you pull it all the way down to the tip. The second note of number 49 has the V symbol right above it. That V symbol stands for up bow. While we start our bow at the tip, and we push it all the way to the frog. Usually, all we need to do to play with our bow is we go back and forth, back and forth. So the bowings are pretty intuitive. After we play a down bow, we're already at the tip, ready to play our up bow. Number 49 is called raise and lower, because in order to tip my bow to a different string, I need to raise my arm and lower my arm. If I start off on the A string and I tip to my D string, I need to raise my whole bow arm. Don't just raise your wrist or your fingers. If I raise just my wrist or my fingers, if I lower just my wrist and my fingers without moving the rest of my arm, I'm going to have a crooked wrist and that's not a good bow grip. That's not going to produce you a good tone. It'll sound scratchy and forced. Make sure you have a nice straight wrist from your elbow to your bow. When you place it on the string, you pull down and then push back up. When you raise your arm to tip to your D string, raise your whole elbow with it too, so that your, your arm stays straight. Let's try number 49. Place your bow on the A string at the frog. Double check your bow grip. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. Down, up, down, up. Rest, rest, rest. Tip your arm. Down, up. Down, up, rest, rest, and tip to A. Down, up, down, up, rest, rest, tip to D. Down, 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 up. You'll notice that I played this song twice. Do you remember why I did that? There are two little dots right at the end of the line. Those two little dots are called a repeat sign. Every time you see a repeat sign, you need to go back to the beginning and play the whole song again. Let's look at song number 50. I'll play this one on the cello. Song number 50 does not have a repeat sign, so we are only going to play it once. Be careful to watch out for the down bows and up bows. Song number 50 starts down bow. <clears throat> so I need to place my bow at the frog. Even when I play the cello, you'll notice that when I start on my A string, and tip to my D string, I need to lower my whole arm. It's not enough to just move your wrist 
back and forth because that'll create a crooked wrist and you won't get the strength needed to create a smooth, clear tone. Let's go ahead and try number 50, teeter-totter. Place your bow on the A string at the frog, ready to play a down bow. One, two, ready, go. A, A, rest, tip. D, D, tip to A. Down, up, tip to D. Down, up, tip to A. Down, up, tip to D. Down, up. Nice job. If you want more bow practice, go ahead and try number 51, 52, or 53. We've just completed step two on our practice checklist. Step two was to warm up with our bows. Let's go on to step three where we play songs from our lesson book. Depending on your lesson group, you may have different songs than these, but most lesson groups are reviewing song number 33, 34, and 35. Let's turn to page 12 and try song number 33, Song for Christine. Song for Christine is a song we play without our bow because over our first note of number 33, you can see the letters P-I-Z-Z -Z period. That's an abbreviation for our Italian word pizzicato. That word means to pluck the strings. Let's go ahead and try song for Christine. Our first note is our high D note. Make sure you're pressing three fingers on your D string or on your A string for violin and viola or four fingers on your A string for cello. Place your fingers on your string for your high D note. If you need to pause and take a minute to write in some finger numbers above each note, you may do that now. But we're going to work on memorizing those finger numbers this year. Here's number 33, song for Christine. One, two, ready, go. D, D, C sharp, C sharp. B, B, A, rest. G, G, F, D, E, 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 rest. D, F sharp, A, A, B, B, A, rest. G, G, A, A, D, 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 rest. Nice job. You'll notice that our practice checklist says to go back and repeat each song a few times. I'm only going to play each song with you once, but if you'd like, you can rewind the video to play it again with me or pause the video to play it by yourself. If you need to work on just one specific measure or one group of notes, that's a great practice technique as well. We're gonna go on to song number 34, Natalie's Rose. There's a bracket under some of our notes in Natalie's Rose. Do you remember what that bracket means from last year? Every time you see a bracket underneath a set of music notes, it means that you hold down the fingers for the first note of the bracket. In the case of Natalie's Rose, our first line has a bracket that starts on F sharp. That means I hold my fingers down for F sharp while playing the rest of the notes within the bracket. That bracket tells me that I'm coming back to the note F sharp soon. So keep by keeping my fingers down on F sharp, I can be even more ready to play the song and to play the song faster once that F sharp comes back. If you need to take a minute and practice playing that bracket, you can pause the video and try holding down F sharp 
oops, and holding down F sharp while you play the notes in the middle. Here's 34, Natalie's Rose. One, two, ready, go. D, D, E, G, F, hold it down, G, A, rest. F, F, G, A, B, B, A, rest. F, G, A, rest. G, A, B, rest. A, A, B, C, D, 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 rest. Nice work. I'm going to go ahead to song number 36, Dreidel. There are some brackets in this song too. And again, these are songs that we're reviewing from last year. So you may need to take a minute to pluck through them by yourself to become familiar with those notes again. Here's number 36, Dreidel. One, two, ready, go. D, D, E, E, F, D, rest. Rest, rest, rest. Rest. Rest, rest, rest. Rest. Rest, rest, rest. Rest. Rest, rest, rest. Nice job. That one's a challenging song, so you may need to practice that one just one line at a time. If I'm following my practice checklist, we've completed the first three steps. Setting up your instrument, warming up with your bow, and playing through our assigned lesson book songs. There's a fourth step on your practice checklist, which we may not have reviewed in lessons. The fourth step is to pick any song in the book that was our assignment for this week, and to play along with the recording. Each song in our book has an online play along track where you can play along with the rest of the orchestra in the online track. You can click book one tracks right on our practice checklist. Go ahead and pick at least one song to play along with the online track and have some fun playing along with the rest of the orchestra. After you've done that, your practice session is done. Feel free to watch this video each time you practice to get familiar with your notes again. You can count playing along with this video as practice time. If you already know the notes and you're familiar with some of the songs, then you don't need to follow this video anymore. Go ahead and practice on your own. I look forward to seeing you guys next week at our next lesson. Bye bye